good afternoon, everyone, morning, evening, wherever you are connected in the world. Uh, I'm Dr. Chiara Gabbi, and I'm one of the directors of the Eurocol Anjonet Mentorship Program. Uh, Eurocol Anjonet is a program founded by the European Commission under the Cost Action Funding Scheme, aimed at promoting a scientific cooperation among the scientists active in the field of cholangiocarcinoma. Cholangiocarcinoma is a form of liver cancer. Uh, last year, uh, during the pandemic, we established a, a mentorship program uh, with the aim of supporting the career development of junior scientists uh, inside our network. And this year, together with the second edition of the program, uh, we really wanted to be ambitious and we established a special cycle of lectures called the Mentorship Lecture with the aim of inspiring and supporting the junior scientists, not only in our network, but more in general in the medical academia. Um, I'm really pleased today to uh, introduce our second mentorship lecture. We will have a really special speaker today. Uh, the lecture will be on how to shape a fulfilling career, well, in the field of liver disease, but I would say more in general uh, in, uh, in the medical research, in the medical field. Uh, our lectures are uh, uh, organized in partnership with the European Cholangiocarcinoma Network, the International Cholangiocarcinoma Research Network. They are endorsed by the European Association for the Study of Liver and by the United European Gastroenterology. And we really thank all our partners in, uh, in organizing with us uh, uh, these lectures. We are guests of the University La Sapienza in Rome and we really thank uh, uh, the University for supporting also uh, our lectures. So I'm pleased to leave the floor now to our moderator today, uh, Dr. Pilar Acedo um, from the University College in London. Uh, she is one of the mentees in our program and she will uh, introduce our special guest speaker today. Uh, Pilar, the floor is for you and thanks for uh, being with us today. Thank you, Chiara, and thank you, everyone, for joining us today. It's a pleasure to be here today. And first of all, I want to say thank you to the Coast Action for um, allowing me to be a mentee. And I, I think over last year, um, it was a great experience. So um, I don't know. I, I, I have to introduce our, our speaker today. And I think you all uh, know Jesus Bañales, but it's an honor, Jesus. Uh, to be introducing you and to have you in here. I am also looking forward to your lecture. So Professor Jesus Bañales is Professor of Molecular Biology and Head of the Liver Diseases Group at the Biodonestia Health Research Institute in San Sebastian, Spain. And he's a multidisciplinary group uh, focuses on studying the molecular mechanisms involved in liver pathobiology uh, with special attention to cholangiocarcinoma. And he's uh, looking for novel diagnostic and therapeutic strategies to treat uh, these and other uh, liver diseases. So he's also a professor of sciences at the University, uh, University of Navarra and assistant professor of medicine and sciences at the Mayo Clinic, and also at the University of um, Ariandina in Colombia. He, he's, he has published more than 170 research articles in, in, in international and uh, journals, and some of them focusing on, on cholangiocarcinoma, he is a PI in more than 40 research projects. And I, I think all of us as young gastroenterologists or um, people working on liver disease, um, we all are looking forward to your uh, talk, uh, Jesus. Just before moving to the lecture, um, I would like to remind all that in this that even if you cannot um, go live and ask questions um, by uh, live, you have the chat uh, option in there in the lower part of the Zoom um, app, you can see the chat. And during the lecture already, you can start typing. I will, when Jesus is done with his lecture, I will read the, the questions for him. And also uh, after the talk, you can continue uh, writing there uh, some questions. And without further ado, uh, Jesus, it's an honor to have you in here uh, today and the floor is yours. Well, good afternoon, everybody. Thank you very much, Pilar, for your kind introduction. And also, I want to thank Chiara, Gabi, and Rocio Macias for inviting me to participate today in this webinar. And particularly, I want to congratulate them for this uh, fantastic initiative on the webinar series, which I think that are very, very helpful and very, very nice conducted. So thank you very much. It's a really honor for me to, to be here today. So uh, I will try to share my screen. Yeah, I think now it's fine, right? So, well, I was committed to give a lecture on how to shape a fulfilling career in the field of liver diseases. 
well, what I will try to do is to just provide an overview of my life in science. Okay? I think what I can provide is a general vision from myself, from my own experience during 20 years, uh, well, doing research in the field of liver diseases. Well, so I, I did, uh, I studied biochemistry at the University of Navarra in Spain between 1997 and 2001 when I finished. And I enrolled a PhD program at the same university in 2001 under the supervision of Professor Jesus Prieto and uh, Professor uh, Juan Francisco Medina. And my PhD was focused in the understanding of the molecular mechanisms involved in bioflow generation in health and in cholestasis, putting particularly attention on A2, which is a chloride bicarbonate exchanger localizing to the apical membrane of cholangiocytes that promote biliary alkalinization and also play an important role in the control of the pH of cholangiocytes. So I was mainly focused in the understanding of the regulation of A2 in normal biflow generation and also in a cholestatic liver disease such as primary biliary cholangitis. During this period, I also performed a shorter scientific mission at the University of Colorado in 2003 under the supervision of Professor Brian Doctor and Greg Fitz, past president of the ASLD, what I learned and, and I was uh, set up the conditions to isolate and culture cholangiocytes. And you can consider that in 2003, this was not uh, a general uh, process. Uh, we, we were, uh, let's say, we were one of the first group trying to isolate and characterize these, these cell types. And we were able to do it from rats in 2003 and later on from mice and, and from human liver or normal human uh, tissue. So in 2006, I finished my PhD, uh, publishing a couple of uh, studies and decided to keep uh, working on the field of biliary pathobiology. And I decided to, to move to United States. I was in contact with Professor Nick LaRusso, an eminent uh, scientist in the field of biliary physiology and pathobiology, as you all might know. Uh, I was lucky enough to move to his laboratory in 2006 and spend uh, two years and a half, mainly focusing the study of the primary cilium of cholangiocytes as a sensory organelle. So the primary cilium of cholangiocytes in the past was uh, described, but uh, all the information in the literature was that it was a reminiscent organelle without function in cholangiocytes. And in the group of Professor Nick LaRusso and in other groups, uh, we were able to demonstrate that the primary cilium is a sensory organelle. So it's not an unfunctional reminiscence of, of the cell. It's a functional organelle, particularly has mechano, chemo, and osmosensory function, uh, detecting changes in the bile, in flow, composition, and, and, and also osmolarity. And these changes tr are transmitted by this antenna into the interior of the cell, modifying the cellular function and also the response uh, into, the, into the bile. Uh, composition. Also, I was uh, much involved in the study of uh, cholangiopathy called polycystic liver disease, which is a genetic disorder characterized by bile duct dilatation and progressive development of multiple hepatic cysts. So after these two years and a half uh, uh, experience at the Mayo Clinic, I decided to move back again at the University of Navarra. I'm originally from Pamplona, where the university is placed. And I uh, I arrived again to Pamplona as a, um, a senior postdoc, training different students and collaborating in different projects, mainly again in bioflow generation and cholestasis. But at this time, I didn't find the appropriate niche to, to start to grow myself as a PI, as a young PI. So I decided to look for this opportunity abroad and I explored different options in the United States, in China, where I traveled and I was interviewed, I was interviewed by by a committee uh, at the University of Nanjing where a big institution was going to build up and uh, also in UK. And uh, although I, have, I was accepted in a couple of these institutions, I decided to give an opportunity uh, of my career in San Sebastian, which is a city about 40 kilometers to Pamplona. I decided to move to San Sebastian because uh, I balanced the scientific and personal part of my situation at that time. And also because Professor Luis Bujanda, the chair of gastroenterology, offered me a couple of times to move to San Sebastian to create a, a group focusing the study of liver diseases. Uh, in 2012, it was recently created a new institute called Biodonostia, associated to the hospital, 
And I decided to take the challenge and move only with a master's student. So I was alone almost in the, in the lab. So I actually, I was almost alone and with a very short contract of six months. So it was a big, big challenge. So I applied to multiple grants, uh, local and national grants. And then uh, I was lucky enough to obtain a couple of them that allowed me to have a more stable position and also to have the opportunity to recruit uh, young scientists to the, to the group to do the PhD studies with us. And also I was very lucky to be able to recruit uh, Maria Jesus Perugorria, a young PI uh, that was doing a, a very successful postdoc uh, in Newcastle University working in uh, chronic liver injury and fibrosis with Derek Mann. So he joined the group and started to work together with me and others in, in, in the study of liver diseases. Then with this group, we, we started to apply to all national and international grants. And we also established a very tight collaboration with clinicians at the hospital. So becoming a really multidisciplinary team. So we, we were meeting very frequently, trying to address the, the important questions from the clinics uh, and, and the, from a biologic viewpoint. And we established a very, very good uh, collaboration trying to do basic research, clinical research and translational one with some uh, examples. Um, and then in 2017, we obtained a couple of European grants that allow us to grow, to, to recruit uh, additional young people, a very talented one like Pedro Rodriguez, a, a young PI from the group, very talented from the University of Lisbon. He's now conducting a, a line research in the study of chronic liver injury, mainly Nafoli and Nash, and its relationship with liver cancer. And as you can see, the group has grown significantly uh, during all of this period, you know, from just a master's student to uh, a very large uh, multidisciplinary team. But this is not the, the success of myself at all. This is a success of too many people who has belief in the project, particularly, particularly Professor Ruiz Bujanda, and also Machus Perugorria, Pedro Rodriguez, and many others that are working hard in, in this. No? So we are mainly focusing the study of liver pathobiology, first of all, to study the liver physiology in normal conditions uh, in order to understand how, it, how the liver works. And then if we are able to understand how the liver works, we will be able to understand what happened uh, during chronic liver injuries or acute liver injuries. No? So we are very much focused in the study of the chronic liver injury in Nafoli, uh, also uh, in innate immunity in this context and in liver cancer but putting special attention also in biliary pathobiology, uh, in primary biliary cholangitis, polycystic liver disease, primary sclerosis in cholangitis, and cholangiocarcinoma. So this is a little overview of my life in science during the last 20 years. I was very lucky, very lucky to meet two very good people. So when, uh, when everybody has the question or, or the or the idea to, to become or give a chance to be a, a, a PI, a young PI, uh, when is the moment? Uh, what does a PI mean? Uh, all of these questions uh, become to all, all of us and probably to many of you in the audience. No? To my opinion, a PI is a scientist with authority, uh, with the appropriate level of authority, responsibility and skills to direct a project. He or she must to have an independent thinking, must to be able to take ownership and responsibility of the projects, physically and intellectually and should control over research line, study designs and protocols. This is really, really important. And a PI can be a group leader or can lead a research line within an already established group. So you can have a large team and you can develop your own studies in collaboration with the team, but being you uh, or taking you a significant part of the effort. No? When is the right moment to become a young PI or a group leader? Uh, well, I consider that the right moment is when you are the driver of your education. So you are not uh, very much trained by, by others. You are doing your training by yourself. You are no longer in the passenger seat. You are full of energy and you feel you need to develop your personal and professional careers. In my case, I feel in this moment when I was at least 30 years old, more or less when I came from the States, I spent some time in Pamplona and then I wanted to, to have chance to my ideas and, and, and see by myself if they are good or bad ideas uh, in, 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 in my own uh, research. No? So how to do it, how to become a, a PI? I think it's very important uh, to find a good microenvironment. So you need, if you want to be a young PI or a PI, you need to find a good niche. Eh? What does mean? I think you need to find and look for a good institution 
a scientific institution that provide you lab space, uh, enough uh, infrastructure and equipment, and hopefully funding. It is not very useful, but there are some institutions that also allocate some annual funds to the group. It's not the case of our institution. You, sh you should find an institution uh, that can be connected or within a university. This will allow you to keep uh, teaching eh, and also trying to identify good students for your group, for your laboratory, so you can activate your academic career. And also you need to find an institution with local and national funding agencies. So agencies that where you can apply and try to obtain funding for human resources, equipment and consumables. It's important to explore in advance all of these institution, the possibilities of that institution in terms of connection with the university, with the students, and also the local and national funding agencies. How easy are they uh, providing fundings and how you uh, could obtain some of these fundings? No? You need to take a look also in the institution as a whole, trying to see the critical mass of scientists in the, in the center in order to establish collaborations, in order to improve and speed your career. And also you should consider uh, the association of your institution to or the partnership with hospitals and biotech companies. Or if this is very important in order to provide translational uh, impact to your results. In my case, I decided to move to San Sebastian again because I balance both the, the professional and the personal aspects of my situation. San Sebastian, for those that don't know the city, is a very beautiful city localized in the north of Spain, very close to the French border, almost 30 kilometers. It's in the sea coast and is very famous because of the food, the, the landscape and, and, uh, and the lifestyle. And in San Sebastian, there, is, uh, there was a recently created research institute called BioDonostia. Donostia in Basque, uh, in the Basque language means San Sebastian. That's why it's called Donostia Hospital, which is San Sebastian Hospital in Basque. And here is BioDonostia, right? Bio San Sebastian, let's say. So this is the institute that was built up in 2011, uh, that at that time had seven departments and 26 research groups. This institute is associated to the Donostia Hospital, which is a multi-center institute and also has associated a biotech part company with different companies and also the University of the Basque Country. So this institute is associated or close to all of these uh, key um, institutions. But most importantly, uh, at the Basque Country, uh, it was built up a new program to attract, retain and promote multidisciplinary scientists called Iker Basque. This is a very unique program in Spain and also in Catalonia, and now it's being expanded to different communities. So what they are doing is trying to generate a, a tenure track position of five years and then evaluate you every three years. No? And you have a really uh, track uh, scientific career to, to follow. No? It is a quite um, competitive program, but uh, it is very, very positive. So I applied when I moved to San Sebastian and I was lucky enough to, to obtain a tenure track position for five years from 2012 and 2017. Then in 2017, I was evaluated and promoted to associate professor. And then in 2022, to professor of molecular biology. So I, I will going to provide you some tips uh, from my personal experience on what is important when you become a, a PI or a young PI. I think it's important to find your own research niche. So it must to be a, an innovative topic, an innovative field, and with enough impact to attract fundings. So you need to generate nice science, top science, but particularly you need to find or identify the, the niche of science that can attract funding. In my case, I was working in the pathobiology of biliary diseases for many years, but not much working on cancer. But when I moved there, I realized that, well, colangiocarcinoma is a very, very damaging disease, very orphan at that time. And uh, I realized that there were different uh, associations and different charities in Spain and programs for, for, for doing research in cancer. So I decided to open a line of research within the Greenmont Colangiocarcinoma and together with different colleagues at the international level, we generated the European network for the study of Colangiocarcinoma to give awareness and to, to start to collaborate and help each other. So I think it's very important to find your own uh, niche of research. You need to find projects that excite you. Right? You need to find topics that really uh, impact on, on your on your dreams and on your um, most ideas. You must to be positive eh, in, in, your, in your idea, in your tenure track idea. 
is better and nicer and also try to be collaborative and friendly with the people. If you help the others, they will definitely help you in general. So try to ask for advices also to more senior people, to your, men to your previous mentors and to also more senior colleagues. This is very important, provide uh, advices in help, uh, tips, guidance, etc. Look for serendipity. The serendipity, you need to look for it. You need to be in the right place and in the right moment. And uh, I was very lucky to meet along my life too many people in many, very different situations that really impact on my life in the professional, but also in the professional life. So you need to find for your serendipity, have a good balance between life and work, get out from toxic people. Eh? You need to try to be close to positive people and good people. That's really, really important. Read a lot. If you read a lot, you will save a lot of time from the bench. So you need to know what is in the literature. So take some time to read uh, when you are thinking to, to generate a, a line of research. Try to see what is in the field and try to decide a good and innovative topic. So it's good to have like a two, three months of reading before starting to do experiments and order the equipment. Enjoy friends and family. Try to always balance the family and the friends and with the work. Not it's, Science is not the only thing yeah? and, and the work is not the only thing. Try to have a balanced uh, life and also obviously take care of yourself, do your hobbies uh, and uh, exercise that, that always help in the moments of stress. So this question is a very important question that I think all of us have at a certain moment. I am capable to create and manage a research group. So when you really say, well, I want to be or, or give some chance to, to, to see if I can be a, a PI and an independent scientist. So, but I am capable enough uh, because the challenges are big at the moment. Well, the answer I think is why not? Uh, why not? Uh, of course, uh, you, can, you can do it. Everybody can do it. Uh, it's a matter of, of uh, attitude, of, 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 you know, of guidance and, and effort and energy. So this is what the, everybody see. This is a typical iceberg illusion. So in the top, you see the success of somebody uh, when he's doing a, a nice science, uh, he's, he's getting funding, he's, uh, I mean, he's um, developing uh, PhD students. But what the people don't see is in the bottom is much more bigger. Is you know, a big persistence, a high percentage of failure in grants, in paper rejections, in, in many applications sacrifice, big sacrifice, uh, many hours of work, uh, also good habits, and again, to balance the, the good habits with the work, uh, high dedication and also disappointment. But I would add also, it's important to have good ethics and honesty in science, but in every aspect of your life, curiosity, passion, enthusiasm and motivation, and also a certain grade of leadership. Also try to be resilient eh, in the bad moments, and also it's good to have a piece of ambitious, have good discipline, compromise with friends, with colleagues, with collaborators, and also have high responsibility of everything. The main challenges that I see for a young uh, PI is the funding. Uh, this is difficult, but if you are uh, persistent, the money will come. This is definitely will be the case. Uh, when I uh, started the group in 2012, uh, it was in a big crisis worldwide. It was the crisis of 2009 that was highly impacting Spain and other countries. And there were not too much fundings. But I can tell you that I'm now in more uh, decision committees in, in grants. Uh, we are looking for young scientists, you know, I'm very talented scientists. So the, the, the funding agencies really uh, are looking for, for young people uh, preparing nice projects and trying to develop themselves. So I think the agencies are particularly looking to see these people and trying to support them. So push, be pushed, uh, try to, to keep persistent and the money definitely will come. Obviously you need to have preliminary data, you need to have a good line of research, but if you combine everything, uh, you will be success, you will succeed. Something that I think is important is to recruit and train smart people, but particularly not the smart people. Smart is important, but be good people, hard worker people, and easygoing people. You need to team up. You need to find a good team and a good microenvironment. And when you go to the lab, you need to see smile faces. You need to have good, uh, a good habitat. Otherwise, uh, it will be very difficult for you and for the others to work in a non-easygoing microenvironment. 
you need to have a good lab organization and planning. You need to organize well the lab, the animal facility, yeah? because when you are working with many animals with Connolly, you need to have a very, very good organization in order to don't have errors. Also with the ethical protocols, now we are all the time applying to ethical committees for any project, and this is a lot of effort and must to have a very well organized agenda, and also in the ordering and, and the organization of the equipments and consumables. Uh, you need to have, or you need to provide a team training and supervision, but always balancing the freedom of the people and the supervision. I think the lab meeting is a good moment, probably one week or two weeks to, to do this kind of uh, training, supervision, and general brainstorming between the lab mates. You need to be critical, but at the same point, at the same point positive uh, through the different difficulties and failures. You should prioritize the key objectives and the time management because otherwise you can lose a lot of time in science and in everything. So it's very important to have a good timing uh, agenda and priorities. For those clinicians, it's important to also try to balance the clinical and research duties, which are not always easy. And, and I think it's a, a tremendous effort for clinician scientists, but it's uh, obviously very, very needed to have them on board. It's very important to delegate tasks. You cannot do everything so by your own. You need to delegate and trust your, your people, the people of your lab, and also try to create a good human environment again. So try to team up and try to also do things outside the laboratory. I think this is really important in order to meet uh, your lab mates, not only from the scientific point of view, also from a personal point of view. Well, the Independence Day, when the day of the independence arrive, uh, well, I think it's important to think on the SWOT analysis. What is the SWOT analysis? Well, you need to consider your strengths, your weaknesses, and also the opportunities that you might have and the threats. Well, when you uh, start to your own lab or your own uh, line of research, uh, you have strengths, you, you have experience, you, you have uh, techniques uh, that you might be expert or not, or you have uh, resources or tools so it is important to offer them to collaborators so you need to offer your strengths uh, to collaborators that, that that will help you to to meet people to collaborate in different studies and also put, to put on value your research regarding your weaknesses well it's important to find ways to to deal with them so find collaborators who really add value to your research so if you have gaps try to cover these gaps with uh, collaborations with good collaboration and also try to ask for advices again to, to more senior people, to your previous mentors, if you have a still good feeling, or with other friends more, more senior. Try to also consider the opportunities. Take the train in some of the cases. Uh, that's also, you need to always consider this. And also regarding your threats, try to work always in contingent plans. So there are different threats, and it's very important to consider potential contingent plans for, for your life in science, but also for grants. When you are providing different objectives, you should always include contingent plans to these objectives because different things can, can happen. For example, the COVID, no? this is a really uh, clear example. And I think it's, we need to always move forward or try to go to the excellence. Uh, what the excellence means? Well, I think to, to generate relevant data, that's the most important thing on excellence that usually is associated with publication in top journals and also presentation in in uh, big meetings uh, like ESL, ASLE, or others. I, I, I should, I think I, you should, or I, I, I have considered very much the academic uh, career also. So I, I like to train the students and also to transmit the knowledge, the, the things that we are developing or, or the people in the field uh, to new generation. I think this is really, really nice. And it's a fantastic way to, uh, to see and to identify good students and also potential fellows for your group. Try to give a chance to your results yeah, in, in translational science with companies, with, uh, with your uh, clinic unit, for example. Try to build your own network of colleagues and collaborators and try to be a good mentor for the young PIs that are starting in your group in the next year. So try to do uh, to your fellows the same that you would like to be uh, obtained for your mentor. Well, these are several key uh, things that I think a, a good mentor should have. A uh, good mentor should provide motivation to, you, to your fellows and to the young PIs of the group, provide good advices to them. Also, they, uh, a mentor should uh, help in the success of the mentee, provide good direction, coaching continuously, and support should help to achieve the goals of the, of the mentees, and also provide always a good training. 
And uh, well, it's important to do not grow alone because if you grow together with your team, it's much more better and much more nicer. So uh, at least this is my, my experience. And this is the, the, the feeling and the behavior that we have in the group. Uh, I think it's important to participate in national grant scientific networks. Yeah? For example, in Spain, we have different national scientific networks that I'm participating, registry databases, scientific education associations, uh, etc. And also international, like ESL, ASLE, International Primary Sclerosis and Cholangitis Study Group. And also a couple of friends uh, build up in 2005, 2015, sorry, the European Network for the Study of Cholangiocarcinoma that now has become one of the of the most uh, nicer institutions in the study of cholangiocarcinoma. It's a very friendly uh, network. It has expanded a lot, and and we are all very happy to have uh, key experts in the field uh, from the whole Europe, and also key colleagues and collaborators from the International Cholangiocarcinoma Reference Network and Cholangiocarcinoma Foundation (AMMF). And many others. So this is a, a really, really great uh, example on how the people can build up nice network, friendly network, and, and we can all together uh, accomplish different goals. No? And this kind of network uh, will increase your productivity, definitely, because you will collaborate in different aspects. Your productivity will be faster or better quality, will be of much higher impact, and it will be much more fun, definitely. A network means new friends, and in my case, uh, I have multiple experiences like this. So this is a picture, for example, of Professor Nick LaRusso a couple of years ago, coming with different friends from medical school to San Fermín Festival in Pamplona in, in Spain. So they spent a couple of days. We enjoy very much uh, the, the fest. This is with uh, Rui Castro from uh, Lisbon, a very good friend here, Marcus Pedro Pedro, Andre, and Marta. You can see Professor Mink here in, uh, in Myanmar couple of years ago, Professor Dren from Nijmegen, very good friend, Sergio Baradilone from Austin, Minnesota, Raul Andrade, Jose Luis Calleja from Spain, Manolo Romero, Sevilla, here you can see Marco Marchoni, Vincenzo Cardinale, Marcin Kraukis, Oyer, and, and others. So Patricia Spichueta, Marco Arrese from Chile. So you can see that also you need to consider science as a fantastic tool to meet people, make good friends and travel. If you like to travel, that's a, a fantastic uh, job because there are multiple events, multiple ways to meet nice places. And I have the opportunity to, to really visit very nice places with always uh, together with very good colleagues. So well, here in Brazil also with my friend, Fernando Barreiro. And now I like very much this picture of Joe Zrent, eh, the, the editor in chief of OG Journal. And here you can see Pedro Machus. Well, you are now the, you are the author of your story. So you need to build up your own story. I'm in the way. I'm still not at all, not young. So I'm in the 40s, but uh, I, I hope to have some, some time ahead to, to continue. But obviously, I can see from the audience that there are young scientists, uh, about 30s, that uh, is the perfect moment to start to think that on your career as a, as a young PI for the future. And I really encourage all of you to to keep pushing, be brave, and, and you will enjoy definitely uh, this uh, fantastic uh, job. Thank you very much to all for your attention. Thank you very much, uh, Jesus, for this inspiring uh, inspiring talk. Uh, I totally agree. Um, I, I love your sentences about getting away from toxic people and read a lot. I totally agree also. Um, it's, it's, it's really important to you know, be updated and also that networking is key. And I always say that, you know, as you, you mentioned before, having good friends around and doing a great science, right? What else can we ask for? So I think is uh, thank you very much for this um, really positive talk. And I see some questions already in the audience. So I, I will I start with those if it's okay. And then I have some others, but I, I will uh, wait for it. So I think, um, one of the questions is, uh, do you have any kind of practical advices, particularly for postdocs that are now, you know, you did your first postdoc and now is the moment to try to get this junior faculty position? And what do you think are the two or three key uh, things to take into account? Yeah. Thank you, Pilar. Thank you very much. Uh, I think in my, in my case, as you can see, nothing was easy at all. So it was in 2009. I had everything, let's say, 
in a way. I was in Pamplona, I have a stable position, but I didn't feel happy because I didn't have the opportunity to, to develop myself as a scientist. So I was part of a group without the possibility to generate my own projects, to apply the grants. So uh, I left my, my situation in Pamplona. I was, let's say, for others, it could be perfect because I was a, a stable contract position, but I was looking to develop myself. No? So I was flexible. So I decided, well, maybe I can go to China, to US for a couple of years and then try to see if I can go back, maybe with more experience, maybe I can find another niche where I can develop myself. And I was in China, for example. So what I did was to, I, I contacted a, a couple of friends, I have a potential uh, possibilities abroad. I was exploring some of them. And also I went to nature jobs. You should consider nature jobs and other platforms where uh, scientists are offering uh, positions worldwide. This is a very active and good platform together with others. So I applied to a, one position in China, a very attractive one in the University of China. They were building up like a research center of 30, 30 floor building with a lot of resources and funding. And I, I was one of the selected ones. So I went to Ch Nanjing, I interviewed with a couple of people. They have set me, but then at the same moment, I was in San Sebastian. It was in the moment that I moved to San Sebastian. I was a six month contract applying to multiple things. And then I got a, the tenure track position of Ikerbas, five years. Mm -hmm. And then even for a while, I was considering to have a dual appointment from China and here, even they were interested on this uh, point. But at the end, I realized that it was going to be very complicated and decided to put the full energy in one of the baskets, in this case, in San Sebastian. And I'm very happy to take this decision because this allowed me to be close to the family, to my parents, to my friends, also to, for, to for do a family also. Mm. It was much more helpful, but again, I was uh, open to other possibilities. Yeah? I was open to go to states. Uh, I, I, in that case, I really considered to. I wanted to have a chance in science, and and I didn't see this opportunity before. And in San Sebastian, it was fantastic. So, Professor Buhanda offered me the lab, and then I, I looked for all the other aspects, funding, people, everything. No, and and. He always provide me a very good friendship, a very good support, and I think uh, you need to find this kind of environment. No, not always. Uh, you have need to. You don't. You don't need to look for, let's say, a Champions League team. No, it's, it's not like that. You know, uh, maybe you can grow better in a team where you have minimal kind of resources, but that you can develop in a better way. You know, so at least was in my case uh, where where I. Whatever. Yeah, I think it's, it's very important to find your place. You are saying that, right? When you find your place, you really know you are there. And then you can find collaborators helping you, mentors, and people around you, right? So, yes. yeah, perfect. Yeah. yeah. And I, I have just a curiosity. When you were starting, and you mentioned uh, it's fun to see that you were starting with one uh, MSc student, right? How yes. would you, you convince people? Because now everyone, you know, is like, um, some people just want to go to top laboratories with this, uh, you know, really senior PI because of the name. How do you convince um, people to join your team when you are starting? Yeah, I think for, for PhD programs, I think you should consider these two aspects. I mean, you should consider the group where we are going, obviously, because uh, if the group is a leader group, a leading group and is doing very good science, uh, obviously you have more chances to be well trained and do published good papers. But it's not always like that because the big teams like this one uh, sometimes are not well organized because there are too many people and there are some people that are going by their own. So uh, you need to find uh, always when you go or you are considering to go somewhere, I really advise you to, to have some interviews with the people yeah, in, in the lab. And you need to understand how the, the group works, how happy is the people there or not. Uh, and then decide, no? I mean, because otherwise, maybe if you take a decision without have a, having a whole idea of the group, maybe you can be disappointed. And I think uh, it's better to consider everything in advance, at least uh, uh, to a certain level, no? So, well, uh, in our case, how I try, how I, how I convince the people, well, <laughs> what, what we did, I mean, in the Basque country, we have, uh, we, uh, well, different, funding agencies for PhD programs. So what you do, you need to do is to look for good students. So the scores at the mm -hmm. university is important, but also your CV and the project. So with these three aspects, you go, you apply and you obtain or not a PhD program. So we were able to, to convince a couple of students that were doing summer stage at the lab. So we met him, we had good feelings with them. And then uh, we decided to go to the PhD. So we are always opening 
a summertime position for students. We have always like three, four students every summer. So we, it's a way to that they can meet the lab. We can meet them and within the years, we can see if both, of, uh, both sides uh, want to move forward with a PhD program, for example. No? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I think it's, yeah, it's, it's great to take a look to these opportunities, right? Internships, summer internships, or these kind of things to know the group, because it's really important also, you know, to know the people you will be working with every day and support, the support that you get, particularly at the beginning, right, in your career. So, yeah, um, I see someone is asking and curious to what they are saying. Thank you very much for the really nice talk and the um, uh, motivational talk. And they are curious to know if you, uh, did you ever consider moving to industry? Well, um, well, over the time I'm, I am collaborating with the industry. So we are collaborating in clinical trials. We have uh, licentiated different patents to industry. So that uh, particularly is what I told you. So we have companies close they are spin-off or small companies, so we have tight collaboration with them. So we are trying to understand which are the field of, of interest of them. So and we are trying to adapt our research to their knowledge and their interests. So we are trying to, to collaborate. So I, I'm collaborating with different companies in the Basque country and globally. I didn't move to the industry, let's say 100% of my time, although I have uh, some few opportunities. But because I, I want to, you know, develop my, again, my, my science, my my research and and I think this balance is really really good and I really like it. So do a scientific part. I do a small academic part at the University of Navarra, uh, also in the states and, and in Colombia, and also in the industry, uh, central part of my time. Yeah, perfect. And and now someone is asking, do you think it is more complicated to start a group if you don't move to a different country or in a different institute uh, after? I guess it's after your PhD. Yeah, no, this, this is a very good point. Yeah, actually, all the evaluating bodies, at least in Spain, the national one, if you want to raise a, a group or you want to become a, a scientist, uh, you need to have experience abroad. Otherwise, uh, you will have a, a drop, a very high drop in the score. So uh, what I really, uh, you know, uh, advise the people in my group or others is to, I mean, it's always very good. It's not only to, to cover or follow the rules, it's because uh, the, the colleagues, the contacts that you have abroad is fantastic. You really do very good friends. You meet very nice people. It's a very nice personal growing. Uh, and I think, uh, you know, it's, it's something that this career allow you, you know, to travel, to meet people, to spend time abroad. And then you can try to come to your country or not. But uh, I think you need to see this not as a limitation, as a strength, you know, because that's a great opportunity. I mean, I'm now 70, I mean, 17 or 42 years old, and I don't have that much freedom to spend like one year or two years like before, no? But I, I really jealous to, to go back to this uh, period because it's really nice, you know? And I really encourage all of you to do it. Yeah, I totally agree. I did some internships during my PhD and now during the postdoc and they are great. And then you meet, some of these friends as you were saying before, right? And then your friends and they become your collaborators and yeah, maybe people, uh, junior uh, members and th those things are the future also. And then they can be people that are uh, also included in your grants, right? So mm -hmm. I yes. think it's, it's, it's great. Um, so when is asking how has COVID-19 affected your career? And um, they are finding that it's kind of difficult now in terms of collaborations that you were mentioning before, networking is key, traveling and meeting people. So um, how how is this affecting your career or your team? Well, I think this has affected everybody, uh, may, very negatively to everybody, but I can see some positive seats, you know, which are, for example, in my case, uh, in 2020, the, the outbreak of the COVID, I had a year full of trips. Full of trips means almost every week I was abroad. And, and that's uh, really stressful <laughs> because uh, particularly you have two kids and your wife doesn't work on, on, the, on science. Uh, it's really complicated. So I was really uh, on panic, you know, because I have an agenda very, very tight. And due to the outbreak, I spent all the time with the family, with my kids. It was fantastic. You know, it was really, really great. And the fact that I was able to sit down give this talk just by Zoom uh, and do not spend that much time traveling, allow me to really finish a couple of papers, very important for the group. I uh, write some grants. So really uh, for me, it was positive to have some time, uh, you know, uh, to, to just sit down, finish a couple of things and start new ones. 
but obviously we have uh, multiple issues as the as the in the audience commented in terms of um, shipment of, of consumables with different institutions mm. also the, the sharing of samples that we are trying to manage no yeah so yeah but again it's what i say no due to the pandemic we can now realize more even on contingent plans when we apply to grants when when everything in the cost action that Vincenzo is fantastically coordinating. Uh, we, we have actually funding from the European Commission to meet every year in different nice places and, and do some work together, but we couldn't do it. So Vincenzo and others, you know, uh, reinvent themselves on, on new ways in terms of, well, Zooms and another kind of aspect, no surveys, uh, different issues, no? And, and, and it was very good also, so, so yeah. Yeah, I think and, and now it's going to be, uh, they, they were mentioning if this is going to change the future. And I think now we see some of these, some of these conferences that are hybrids, right? Face-to-face, -face, yeah. virtual, and people can join. Maybe you have, as you mentioned before, right? Families, you cannot travel, you can still attend the meeting and keep, you know, up to date and, and, and present your work. So I think, yeah, mm -hmm. there are positive things to also take into consideration out of the negative things. Yeah. Um, I think another, um, Another comment here that I think is really important and, and joining like um, that they think your your talk was really inspiring. And then the question is, how do you find inspiration for every uh, diverse research project that you that you have? Well, uh, well, that's an issue because when I was applying to my first grant, the reviewers sometime when I got this five year tenure track position, some in my revision of the tenure track, some of the of the reviewers say that my my research was a little bit broad, not too much for too many topics, you know? but they say at the same time that the productivity in each topic was good. So they cannot argue too much you know, on that. So I think this is the important thing. So you need to see uh, what you can accomplish with topics you like and you want to continue, try to have your colleagues and collaborators in each of the topics, try to allocate people, good people, or, you know, or at least some young senior people to each topic and try to do your best. If you see that you are not progressing too much in one of the topics, well, try to see why and try to see if you know if you need to keep in this field or not. Uh, but if the things are properly or, or in a good way going, I think uh, it's a very good way to to learn from different disciplines to to you know to allocate strategies and things from one topic to another. And it's really for me, it's really nice because. I, I, I like very much to, to investigate in liver diseases. I think the liver is a fantastic organ. Um, and and all your, I, I have friends from each topic, you know, people working on polycystic, on cholestasis, on cancer. So I don't want to leave for the moment any topic <laughs> out. <laughs> so I guess talking to collaborators and friends also, you know, is a way of getting inspiration too, right? Discussing with them, as you mentioned, finding your people that are going to be living outside toxic people stealing ideas and all these kind of things and just discussing about science you can get motivation and inspiration yeah. i mean i had in my career people that was telling me yeah you cannot do it you will never get the grant it was true people mm. told me that <laughs> like no people more senior uh, no no uh, but i was the people who was writing his grant <laughs> you know? so it was, it was interesting no so I, you cannot do it alone but you can write me the grant and i can succeed or let's say no? i will get it yeah <laughs> for so, you uh, no yeah so I think um, I think uh, everybody can do whatever they propose. I mean, obviously with a scope, but uh, in my case, I went slowly, step by step. Mm -hmm. I didn't go from here to here. No, I, I went with a master's student, start with PhD grant, PhD students, then applying to local and national entities. Mm -hmm. Then when they, when I was able to recruit more senior PIs, it was the perfect moment because they can help me very much in the organization of the grant. We went to Europe. Uh, mm -hmm. it, otherwise, it was impossible. I cannot go with a master's student and go to Europe. That's crazy, you know. So, what step by step, step by step, and also with very good collaborators that helped me very much in the grants, like Marco Maccioni, Joe Zren, uh, Nicola Russo, Vincenzo Cardinale, many good friends that were mm -hmm. in our grants, in our papers, and, and it's fantastic, uh, uh, you know, to work with them. So, yeah. Yeah. yeah That's another then, point. That's another point. Um, if you don't have a big group, if you're starting, you can complement your group with colleagues and friends from the outside, uh, you know, and, and even if you are only a master's student, two PhD students, you can include your previous mentor, key colleagues, and then you have like a group of seven, seven, eight people, and you can allocate the tax to even foreigners, uh, you know, even uh, that, that's possible and doable. 
Yeah, and also I guess you can put like if you have a PhD student or something, someone going to another lab to learn a technique and work together with yes. the, your yes. collaborators, right? Yeah. Also, you need to consider potential international PhD programs. Mm -hmm. Now the ESL, uh, there are other different uh, programs where you can you have a good colleague from outside and you've identified a good candidate, then you can apply and get it. We obtained one with Joe Zren, mm -hmm. for example, with uh, Rui Castro in Lisbon. We also mm -hmm. got a. Uh, uh, a Kaisha gram with in Portugal and Spain. So there are also other possibilities of collaboration uh, with not at the, let's say, horizon level. There are also yeah, yeah. between countries, no, or charities also, no, very helpful. Mm. And there is maybe uh, related to that, how, um, I guess at the beginning of your career, you were getting a lot of grant rejections and then the manuscripts, you know, uh, rejections. So how were you dealing with that and how any any tips for yeah. young investigators? Yeah, well, I think uh, when you apply to a good journal uh, and you have a revision, you need to consider carefully the revision, even if you don't like, you know, because sometimes <laughs> it's, it's frustrating. And But if mm. you take a, a T, and you read again the second time, you realize that many of the comments are, are, are fair, you know, are, are yeah. good. <laughs> so, uh, and, and maybe you need to see if you can deal with them by explaining the aspect in the text, but also completing with experiments. So I really recommend you to reapply to another journal after a, a deep internal criticism and revision of the manuscript with the expert ideas, because the paper will improve, eh? will improve mm. significantly, even you, if you only consider this uh, you know, um, without experiments, you know, just revising the manuscript. Um, because many of the times also you apply to different journals, the reviewers of the topic are maybe the same because uh, they are key people and mm -hmm. they, they send to the same people. And that's happened to me also several times, you know, and when you revise a paper and you criticize a couple of aspects and then you receive the same manuscript in another journal without any change, you say, well, you know, uh, that's not fair, no? So, you know, I really recommend to consider carefully. Yeah, and yeah, and for um, writing articles, someone is, is um, saying, how would you train your um, junior people in the team? Do you yeah. have any career advice or the university perhaps right. they have training courses or something? I, I'm very lucky again, uh, because I have a young I send students very talented, but they speak better English than myself. So, <laughs> and I write papers better than myself. So, I, I very lucky. So, uh, in my case, for example, Pedro Rodriguez from Lisbon, you know, they speak English uh, perfectly. The, the people from Portugal and Spain, we are more limited because we see the TV in Spanish, not in English. So, uh, but we're, we're doing our best. But so, so it's not only to have a good English, you need to have mm. always a, big, a good structure of the idea. So, you need to transmit the, the offer. I mean, the, the audience, what you really want to say, uh, what is the general aspect and the missing points? And then the hypothesis is very clear and then the objective. And try to always be very, very clear and objective. Try, don't, don't try to add too many things that you know, don't add value. Very clear and uh, it's better. Shorter than clear is better than mm -hmm. longer and full of information. <laughs> you know? And the same way you are trying to, to provide like uh, multi-omic data or, or technical aspects that are maybe novel, but not easy to understand by people. You need mm. to do easy going uh, presentation to them, you know, because sometimes the people who review are not expert on the technique, but they know, on, uh, they are aware on the disease. So you need to understand why you are using these big uh, tools, but to demonstrate this clinical aspect, no, it's very important yeah. to put the focus in the importance of, of the manuscript, no? Yeah, thank you, Jesus. Yeah, I think it's really, really important. And then maybe before finishing, um, something really interesting, changing a bit the topic. How do you negotiate your position regarding salary and also the time invested in research versus maybe teaching? Any any tips in there? Okay, so well, I think all of us agree that if you want to become rich, you are not in science. So <laughs> uh, in my case, again, I moved to San Sebastian with a contract of six months. That's it. Six months. You have six months to develop your career. <laughs> so that's a really challenge, you know. And in China, I have 10 years position, a huge uh, salary, uh, but I decided to take this effort, no? But, um, but it was not only, so I, I, it was very few months. I think, you know, uh, it was a great effort from Professor Buhanda. He got some funding at that time. And he told me, yeah, this is what I have. Come here and, and let's try, no? So I think it was like uh, 13, 1300 euros or 1400, <laughs> nothing. You know, I was earning much more money in Pamplona and in other places, no? 
but I wanted to give the chance. And then I, I obtained the tenure track position. And the tenure track position in Nikerbas is quite flexible. So they have like a, a, a like a, a different potential salaries according to your CV because people entering this tenure track position are diverse. So there's some, some people more senior and other people mm -hmm. less more junior. So they, they this is a fantastic institution. They really consider very well and, and evaluate carefully the, the the you know the profile of the candidate. And I'm very happy in Nikerbas. So they have a, a good uh, salaries for people, uh, well, not compared to other countries maybe, but at least for living in Spain is, is, is enough. And and again, uh, I am happy, no? but uh, everything was not easy. <laughs> everything was not easy. Yeah, so thank you very much, Jesus. I think we are uh, now on time to finish. Maybe if you want to summarize everything and to finish everything with a positive message, like, um, key tips for young um, investigators in one sentence perhaps. yeah well believe believe in yourself uh, ask for advices on 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 the career and on science eh, on, on more senior people people who has more experience try to be friendly with people that's a way that the people will be friendly with you try to be honest with the people eh, try to be honest and uh, and believe on your dreams and your ideas uh, if you think that you can do it go ahead don't hear like other people that say that you cannot do it just do it no uh, <laughs> you fail i mean you will learn by the path uh, that's a matter you know thank you <laughs> yeah thank you very much uh, jesus and now uh, thank you everyone for attending and for all the, the questions i think it was great and now i give them the floor to uh, kiara gavi to uh, finish the session thank you Thank you, Pilar. thank you, Pilar, and thank you, Jesus, uh, really. I'm sure uh, you have inspired us all, uh, really. Thanks for uh, sharing your experience in a very humble way, but really, really inspiring. Uh, so I'm pleased now to announce our third mentorship lecture. It will be on January the 10th, uh, 2022, so next year. Uh, the topic will be how to get published. So we will uh, really uh, discuss all the details and strategies on how to, uh, to publish our research. So thanks for attending our lecture today. Thanks again to Pilar and Jesus and uh, uh, many wishes of, uh, for the next holidays. And thanks again also to uh, Vincenzo for, uh, and all the Eurocolangionet network for uh, supporting our mentoring program. Thank you very much, Chiara and Rocio. Thank eh? you, you everyone. Did, uh, yeah, yeah. Fantastic job. Congratulations <laughs> Thank you. for the initiative and looking forward to the next webinars. And Thank yeah. you so awesome. much. Thank, <laughs> Thank you and you goodbye. Take care, everyone. everyone. Bye. Goodbye. Bye-bye. Bye. Congratulations. -bye. Bye -bye. Bye -bye. Bye -bye. Bye -bye.